We're back with former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi out with a brand new book, The Art of Power, My Story as America's First Woman Speaker of the House. So the chapter that is missing in this book, and I know you could write 100 books on, on fascinating topics, but the, the missing chapter would have to do with the last month and a half. Yeah, yeah. Since, um, since the debate, the June 27th debate that Dana and I moderated, you were watching it in your, par your apartment here in Washington. What was your reaction when you saw him walk out there and then his answers or his inability to give coherent answers? Well, uh, uh, I thought we were going to see Joe Biden from the State of the Union. I, I never want him to debate what's his name because it's always, he's a joke. You know, he's, it, it's not a funny joke, but it's a joke. Uh, and he said, no, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, and so he was confident about that. As one who has, as party chair in California and also as a leader and speaker with my own uh, candidates for, for Congress and the rest, um, not my own, but our parties, uh, I always would just say, if you're going to a debate, two things. Have a clear mind. Have a clear mind. And remember, as Christine, my daughter, always says, the Tour de France is written one in bed. Get rest. Be rested and clear. You know why you're here. You know what you care about. You know how you want to get things done. You want to show people what's in your heart. You don't have to memorize anything. You don't have to have days of prepping. Mm -hmm. So when I saw him, I thought, in my view, overprepped, not, not a good idea. Did you think that that was all that was going on? I mean, the, the president has not had a full cabinet meeting since last October. There are people, Democrats that I've talked to, who think that obviously he's not able to communicate the way he used to be able to communicate. And they think that people in the White House were hiding this from senior Democrats like yourself, keeping him, keeping a, a close control over who got to see him. I think this president is, a, I mean, he is a consequential president. Of course. In his term in office, he has accomplished great things, as we talk about. Esther How do you think history is going to remember his decision to not run for re-election? I think history will honor him as a selfless person, a selfless leader. Have First, you talked to him? No. Still no? Well, that would not be unusual. A couple of months, weeks, several weeks would go by and I wouldn't talk to him. What do you want him to know? about? Well, he knows I love him. Uh, three generations of our family are big Joe Biden supporters. My husband and I, Paul, and our children and my grandchildren, they love Joe Biden. America did not have a female Speaker of the House until you mm -hmm. in 2006. Mm -hmm. um, I want to hear your honest take on this. We've never had, an Ameri we've never had a woman president in yeah. this country. Yeah. Um, do you think that we can have a woman president? Do you think that there uh, are you concerned about whatever Vice President Harris's uh, pluses and minuses are independent of her gender, notwithstanding, do you worry at all that America will not be willing to elect a woman president? Well, let me just say, because people say all these other countries, Margaret Thatcher, Indira Gandhi, you know, you name Hold them. Hold my ear. Right. All these people. But they are in a parliamentary government. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is for your party to win. The, parliament, the parliamentary elections. And you're the head of the party, and the party chooses to elect you. That's different from running nationally for president and being subjected to an electoral college that is dominated by a few states. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by all rights. We think she should have been president, but she didn't win the electoral college. So it's mm -hmm. harder. I think that Kamala Harris should win because she's the best. She'll be a great president. She happens to be a woman, right. and that's icing on the cake. But do you think that that will be held against her by enough? Of, are, you, are you worried at all about it, knowing how difficult it was for you to even be the head of your parliamentary system and, and, and even get into leadership? Uh, are you worried yeah. at all about whatever that was? And you write about it in your book very ably. <laughs> but you talk, somebody saying when you wanted to be a, in the leadership of the House Democrats, somebody saying, well, why don't you just make a list? <laughs> why do you ladies just make a list of what you want and we'll give it to you? Somebody said that to well, you. Yeah, but when they said, who said she could run? Right, oh, who said she could run? Light my fire, Lord, you right. poor baby. And that's the Democrats. Are you concerned about... <laughs> in this century. <laughs> yes, just a few years ago, really. Are you concerned at all about that attitude uh, standing in the way of a President Harris? We don't agonize, we organize. President 
Harris is astute politically, strong officially and policy-wise, and deeply faithful. And I think that her strength will lead us to victory. And the only reason I became speaker is because I led them to an electoral victory to win the House for the Democrats. Right. That's why. That's organized. I so get it. You get it. Organized, mobilized message. Don't Nobody, agonize, organize. Don't waste the time. Last question. Uh, it might be hard for people to believe, but you're 84 years old. Um, you're still a potent political force. Mm -hmm. You're running for reelection. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if writing this book or just the last month, month and a half, has had you thinking more about your legacy. But, but what are your plans? What is what? I mean, obviously, you're going to have another term in Congress. Are you just going to keep going? Well, who knows? I'm mm -hmm. not one to paint myself as a lame duck, but I do have other things I want to do in life, and uh, the. the uh, Right now, my focus is on winning the election, to have Kamala Harris be president. Tim Walls, we're so proud of our House member, but they were all great candidates for vice president. Any one of them would have been great. Tim is fabulous, and we're happy to have a House member there. Uh, and that's my goal, and to win the House for the Democrats, and hopefully that means the Senate as well. <clears throat> so that's my focus right now. It was very, I ran again to serve now. and. and with, to make sure mm -hmm. that we had a Democratic president, Democratic House, a Democratic Senate, and all that that meant for state legislatures and other uh, races across the board. You know Kamala Harris for a long time because you're both San Francisco Democrats. The Republicans are painting her as a San Francisco radical, a San Francisco uh, liberal. Um, what's, your, what's your take on that? You know, they've been, when we had the convention in San Francisco in 1984, I was chair of the host committee to win the convention and, and, and put it on there, um, at the, our hospitality there. Uh, they called it San Francisco Democrats. And that, what's her name? Somebody from the UN. She kept saying that. Uh, that's, that's. Was that Jean Kirkpatrick? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, her. <laughs> <laughs> but this has been a long story for them. She, uh, she, look, they're recalling Tim Walls as a, 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 a a, pro a progressive and this stuff. He was right down the center. In the house, he, he was, was right yeah. down the center. Well, he, he governed more in, in Minnesota, more more progressively than he than he did as a house member. But but he was not a a he, he. We're all progressives. It's a question of how left wing we might be and all right. of that. As a San Francisco liberal myself, proudly, I can say what works in San, what works in Michigan works in San Francisco. What works in San Francisco does not necessarily work in Michigan. So they have they will govern from the center because you must. Yeah. And they have to be perceived that way. So I wouldn't pay any attention to how the other side, we don't agonize, we organize. Madam Speaker, the book is The Art of Power, My Story is America's First Woman Speaker of the House. Thank you so much for being here. Really My appreciate pleasure. it. Best of luck with Thank the book. You. Thank you so much.